Welcome to Papa's Workshop. One of the most dangerous tools in the shop is a knife that is dull and a chisel that is dull. Yes, most of the accidents that I've had in my entire life were because of a dull knife or a dull chisel. Today we're going to solve that and I'm going to show you exactly how you need to go through the steps to be able to sharpen these tools to be able to keep them safe in your shop. Now this is the Whetstone Premium Knife Sharpening Stone Kit that we're going to use today to be able to sharpen this knife and this chisel. When you open up the box, you're going to find a pair of gloves. And that is certainly nice to be able to have because that will help to keep those fingers from getting cut. And of course, you're going to have the owner's manual to be able to read through and study. Now the first stone that we have is a flattening stone. Now this stone is actually made to be able to flatten the sharpening stones. And this is very important to be able to have. Because over time, as you sharpen different knives and chisels, the sharpening stone will become uneven. And this stone is used to be able to flatten that again. Now these grooves in it were cut with a diamond saw. And that's helped to be able to capture the debris when you're flattening the stone. So don't lose this. This will become very important over time. In fact, my best suggestion is to keep everything in this box because it's a perfect way to be able to store it. Now the next item is this right here. Now this is a polishing compound. It's a green uh, compound that you would actually put onto the leather strap to be able to hone the knife. Now I'm going to keep it in this plastic wrap for now because I'm not going to be demonstrating this portion. But let's go on to the next item. Now this is the bamboo base. And this is what you're going to be actually setting the stone in to be able to support the actual stone. Now this is made out of bamboo and it does have this rubber base on it to be able to prevent this from sliding. Now this next item brings back a lot of memories. I can remember as a kid in the old barber shops, the barber used to take his razor and sharpen it. And then actually he was honing that blade before it was time to give someone the shave. So this is a very valuable tool to be able to make that final honing of the razor before you're ready to shave someone. Okay, the next item is this leather honing strap. Now this is used in conjunction with that green compound to be able to put that polishing edge on the uh, knife or the chisel. And I, once again, as a kid, can remember having an old scrap piece of leather to be able to polish those knives and chisels. So it's nice to have this. Now we're going to move to the stones itself. You have this rubber base that's on it, and this stone is a 400 grit, to, and on the other side is a 1000 grit. And this is going to be the most common stone that you're going to be using. So you can see it's clearly marked on the sides. And on the other one, this is going to be the next stone that is going to go from the, um, let me turn it around so you can see it, it's from a 3000 grit, and on the other side is an 8000 grit. And you can see it clearly labeled there. Now the next item is a guide that you're going to be using for the chisels and for the, for an example, the block plane blades. This is perfect for being able to set that angle to be able to sharpen those chisels with the exactly angle that you need. Now the last item in the box is this angle guide. This guide is used to be able to attach actually to a knife itself to be able to give the precise angle that you need to be able to sharpen a knife. And this is a great tool for a beginner because it provides that necessary consistency to get the blade sharp. When you're first starting out and you need to learn how to be able to sharpen the knife, one of the big questions is, is how much pressure should you put onto the stone with your knife? Well, the easiest way to be able to do it is with the scale. You want to be able to have about four to six pounds of pressure and the only way that you're really going to find that out is with a scale. So grab your scale and put the pressure onto that scale and you want to be able to see and feel what it is like to have four to six pounds of pressure. And then with that knowledge, you can take that to a stone. Now if you have a knife that's in really bad shape and has some nicks on it, then you want to go up to perhaps around eight pounds of pressure. And again, you want to test this out with a scale to, so that you know what eight pounds of pressure would be feeling like when you're sharpening that knife. 
And just remember, four to six pounds of pressure is the normal. How do you know which grit to use and when? Well, the easiest way to be able to do it, the 400 grit is gonna be the most coarse that we have in this particular kit. And what this is gonna be used for is to be able to repair nicks and chips on the different knives and uh, chisels that you have. So a chisel such as this, that has these little chips right here, this is a perfect example of being able to use the 400 grit. Now on the other side for the 1000 grit, this is really used for the general sharpening. This is just going to be to take a blade that just needs to be touched up and sharpened. And this is going to be the general purpose uh, grit that you're going to be using for that. And now then for the 3000 grit. I'm not going to take this one out of the uh, plastic protected cover right now. Now on the 3000 grit, this primarily is used for being able to do the fine sharpening and for deburring. And a lot of time this is used very common with the meat cutting type knives. And then the last one for the 8000 grit, when I turn this over and show it to you, this one is really for honing the cutting edge. And this is best if you're cutting a lot of fruits and vegetables and you need a really sharp knife. This is the side that you wanna be able to use to be able to really get that blade sharp. Now, since I'm gonna be working with the chisel and the knife today, I'm gonna to be using this one right here, the 400 grit, to be able to remove those nicks and those chips out of that blade. And I'm also gonna use the 1000 grit. Now it's recommended on this stone to be able to go ahead and soak it in water for at least five minutes. Some people say more, but really five minutes is all that you really need to be able to soak these stones. And you will see bubbles come out of this. And when those bubbles are gone, you're ready to be able to use the stone. Now for the other stone, for the 3000 grit and above, you really should not soak that stone in the water. I'm going to put this stone in there. You can see all the different bubbles. We're going to let this soak down, like I said, for about five minutes until those bubbles completely uh, stop coming to the surface. Now, while that stone is soaking, I want to show you on this knife how to be able to attach this angle guide. And really, all you need to be able to do is just slip this down right over the top edge of the knife. Now, this is not necessary all the time, but it will give you a good reference to be able to start to make sure that you have this angle correct. This angle needs to be roughly about 20 degrees. Some knives are actually sharpened on a 15 degrees and all the way up to 25, but for the most part, the uh, general angle that is being used is a 20 degree angle. And this guide is going to ensure that you maintain the consistency over the entire edge of that blade to be able to have it sharpened consistently and you have a, a consistent angle. Now to prepare the area, I wanna be able to go ahead and take a non-skid map and I'm gonna put that down. I'm also gonna use an old cookie sheet and that way it's not going to slip. And then I'll use the bamboo tray and this rubber on the stone to be able to keep it from sliding. Okay, the work area is all finished. The stone has been soaking now for more than 10 minutes and there's no more bubbles coming out of it. So I'm just gonna go ahead and put this rubber foot onto the stone. I had the 400 grit up and I'm sliding it into this bamboo base. So we're ready to begin the sharpening. We're gonna start with the knife right down here on this angle. Now this guide actually, according to the manual, is actually 18 degrees. So that's right in that range that we want to be able to have it. So you're going to be able to run the knife down this edge just like this and get the entire blade turned. And then to come back the other way, we're gonna be doing the same thing. We're gonna start right here, and we're gonna be able to come back down the same exact way, keeping that angle consistent. Now 
Now, what's another way to be able to keep this angle consistent? Well, if we take this off, okay, and then we're going to dry the blade, and I'm going to show you another method. I take this marker and run it right down this edge. Now, putting this marker on this knife is not going to hurt it, and it's not permanent. It's going to be able to be washed off very easily, and I'll show you that in a few minutes. All it takes is a little bit of alcohol, and when you wipe that blade clean, and that marker comes off immediately. So don't worry about this step. It's not going to hurt the knife. And I'll do this on both sides. And then as I sharpen it, you're going to see that shiny edge right there show up if it's consistent. Consistency is the key to be able to successfully sharpen the knife. You want this blade to be consistently even from the tip all the way down the entire length of the blade. So this is a very, very important skill to be able to learn in being able to sharpen the knife. Now at this point, I'm not going to use the guide. I am using strictly that uh, marker to be able to keep that angle the same. Now with a little practice, you're going to be able to do this with ease. But that's why the guide is in there. Now after making a few strokes with the knife to be able to sharpen it, just using that sharpie um, as a guide, you can come back and look close up and you can see how that edge is very consistent except for right down here at the tip. So I need to work on that tip just a little bit more. But for the rest of that blade, you can see that consistent angle all the way down. And that is the purpose of having that Sharpie marker on it. Now I want to turn the knife over and sharpen the other side. And I'm going to do the same exact thing. The Sharpie marker is on there. You're going to be able to see just how consistent that I am from being able to go from all the way from the tip all the way to the end of the blade. So after just a few strokes to be able to establish that consistent angle, we're going to take a look at it and see what it looks like. And let's get up close so you can see this in the camera and you can see that consistent angle all the way down, all the way from one end of the blade to the other. And that is the goal. That's what you want to be able to see. So you can tell that the marker works extremely well, but if you're just starting out learning how to sharpen the knife, use that guide to be able to help establish that angle. Now this knife was extremely dull and it has been a long time since I sharpened it. And that's one of the reasons I started out on the 400 grit. But now I cleaned off that side of the stone and I flipped it over to the 1000 grit. Now this is the most common grit that you're going to be using to be able to sharpen the blades. And at this point, I'm going to go ahead and go through that same process to be able to sharpen from one end all the way through to the other end of this blade to be able to get this final knife sharp the way that I want it. Now because this is an everyday use knife, I'm really not interested in being able to take this to that higher grit. It really takes too much of the daily abuse. So I'm going to stay with the thousand grit for, and this is that general purpose uh, grit to be able to sharpen the knives. Now after the knife is completely sharpened, I'm going to go ahead and take a, a towel and wipe this blade dry. Now at this point, most of the Sharpie marker will actually come off, but I want to go ahead and show you exactly how to be able to remove it. Now this is the alcohol that I use. I just happen to have the 91%, but 70% alcohol will be just fine. And all I do is just put it on a paper towel and very carefully, because you're working with the edge, I can wipe that off. And you can see how easily it comes off. Now be very careful not to get cut on this sharp blade. So you want to be able to move in the direction away from that sharp edge. But now let's go ahead and test it and see if this is as sharp. So we'll do the paper test first and you can see that does real well. But also how about cutting hair? Will it cut the hair off my arm? I bet it will. Now I'm not going to shave myself completely down to nothing, but I just want to be able to shave just a little bit and you can see, yep, there's the hair in the hand. It does cut the hair right off my arm. 
So not bad for just a very few minutes of sharpening this knife. I know some people will do this with their knife to be able to sharpen it. So that is another technique. Then I'm gonna turn this over and I'm gonna go the other direction. Now, one of the ways that you can tell if the blade is sharp, if you look down this edge and you don't see any shiny spots, that's what you're looking for. You want to be able to see no shiny spots if you look right down the edge. The other thing you can do, if you move your finger just barely across it, you should feel some resistance. If you don't feel any resistance, that also indicates a dull knife. So that's two ways that you can tell. So always be very, very careful when handling the blade. Now, as far as the honing guide for the chisels, we need to be able to do some work with this chisel. This chisel has some nicks in it. So in that case, we're gonna start off with the 400 grit. I'll wash this off. And put that in there. Then we're going to set this up inside of here and be able to tighten it down. This angle needs to be perfectly flat and you can see right now it's not. So I need to slide this up a little bit until we can get that perfectly flat. And that looks, and that looks real good. But then we're going to take this guy we're going to be able to roll it back and forth like this. And you can see how some of these little chips are starting to come out. And I'm going to start getting this nice and straight across here again. That's looking better. Those little chips are almost gone. Now, if you look at this in the camera, you can see I have one little chip left, and it's still tapered just a little bit on this end, but it's looking much, much better. So a little bit more work with this grit, and then we'll be able to switch it over and go to the 1000 grit. Now, after taking a few more minutes with the 400 grit, everything is looking really good. So I went ahead and cleaned off the stone, flipped it over to the 1000, and I decided to do this portion without the honing guide because it's a very flat, straight uh, edge right now. So I can do this without having that honing guide on it. And again, just a few more minutes on this grit of the 1000, and this chisel will be sharp as just like if it was brand new. Now, if you look at this now, you can see the little chips are gone and it's straight across. That's what we're looking for. And that's becoming a very sharp blade again. Now, to be able to show you just how sharp this is, I'm gonna take this and you can see just how that just peels that up. And that is great. That's what we're looking for, a nice, sharp chisel. This is what you want. You're looking for those little shavings without having any effort at all to be able to make them. That's what you're looking for. One last test that I like to be able to do is does it cut the hair on my arm? And you can see, I can just take a wad of the hair 
And yes, it is extremely sharp. After an awful lot of use, one of these stones may become where it's not even, especially if you don't use the entire surface. Well, how do you go about getting this flat again? In order to help prevent this stone from becoming where it's not level and flat, make sure that you sharpen the knife through the entire surface. Don't just do one section. I remember as a kid, we used to sharpen a pocket knife and we only used the very center of the stone and that's not what you want to be able to do. You wanna be able to use that entire surface. But should you have a stone that becomes uneven, this is a perfect tool to be able to do it. This is what it's designed for. So you're gonna to need to soak this stone again and then you'll just rub this back and forth several minutes and as this is goes back to the level, this stone will actually, with these special grooves in it, capture that material. And of course, you're gonna to have to rinse this out from time to time to be able to have a good surface to be able to rub this on to be able to get it even again. In this video today, I just went over the basics for the knife sharpening because you need to have sharp knives and sharp chisels in your shop at all times. This kit can do that and so much more. If you do a lot of cooking in your kitchen and you need really sharp knives, this is the first step that you need to do. And then you're going to need to take it over to those leather straps to be able to hone and polish it really smooth and nice. And that's where that other stone comes in to be able to get up to that 8,000 grip. But for the purpose of the video today, I wanted to introduce to you this kit, this whetstone system, which is a fantastic kit to be able to have in your shop, and just some basic sharpening techniques that you can use to keep your tools sharp. If you enjoyed this video today, please go ahead and give me a thumbs up. And by all means, while you're there, go ahead and hit the subscribe button and the bell notification. I would really appreciate it. It really helps this channel out a whole lot with the algorithms and what YouTube is doing. So I look forward to seeing each and every one of you in the next video, whatever that may be. I've got a lot of good stuff planned. Bye-bye now.